The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. The Lord has given us what we need to be here. The problem is, if you're believing in the wrong sources, you're going to stay broken. Many of you are convinced by scientific studies. Let me share this with you. A doctor, even in my personal case, I tell you guys all the time, I'm not supposed to be acting, talking, or doing anything I'm doing. And here's the problem. A doctor goes to school. They are indoctrinated. They are taught medicine. So, essentially, a doctor is somebody who will treat conditions. They will not fix a condition. Okay, they won't do that. They will treat it. They have been taught how to treat conditions. And so they medicate you and you guys keep your condition. I didn't need someone to give me medicine. I had everybody mad at me at a certain point because I refused to take medication. I said, I need this fixed. You know, it, it, it started one way, so somehow it has to go away. Well, they didn't give me the answers. And so what I did was I declined everything they gave me. That came with a very bad penalty, as many of you know, when you do that. When you refuse health care, it's a penalty. But I did it myself. All I did, all I did was check my own nutrition, discipline myself to make sure that I had proper nutrition and electrolyte levels all the time and do you not know that my condition reversed in less than a month what i had for about two years that they couldn't do anything about in less than a month's time it was gone i don't deal with that anymore and i've been exposed to some pretty bad things but when you you know how you guys were talking about COVID 19 i've taken more injections and, and more vaccines and more uh, preventive medication than you can shake a stick at I had no choice in the matter. For me, it was more like, you know, today you're getting this shot. You had no say-so in that. And you would get the shot going about your day. Of course, they come with consequences. But I'm telling you something. Your body, no, your body is smarter than any human being. I want you to know that. Your body is. Your body is constantly keeping you alive by instruction of the Father, which is to say, the order he set forward, the body does follow. It knows how to keep you alive, just like the earth knows how to regenerate all of what it needs to regenerate to sustain life on. It knows how. We just have to make sure that the body has ample tools to do what it needs to do. But you have a choice. You can listen to those who have been indoctrinated, who get kickbacks when they prescribe you medications, who will only treat the issue and they will not fix a thing. Or you can be totally healed by trusting in your father's first steps. What was his first step? That you're fearfully and wonderfully made. He didn't make a mistake when he sent you here to this earth. The body you're in, there's no mistake in that body. Your body is exactly what it's intended to be, and it desires to do what it needs to do. It will obey God, right? Now, by way of its desires that it wants it, that it's often prone by, by other spirits, no. But keeping you alive, it's going to obey God. Why? Because you belong to the Father, right? You belong to the Father. Your body knows exactly what to do. But you've got a choice. You've got a choice. And for those of you who are on medications, you just can't come off medications. Do you know why? Because if you're on medications, that means you have a lack of faith in specific areas dealing with your health. And you can't come off medications because you can't 100% trust in what the Lord is doing. Let's go ahead and face that fact. That's why you just can't come off medications. You just can't do that. Unless you have absolute 100% faith in the most high. Unless you can walk in your healing right now. Unless you're ready to deal with a bunch of stuff. And no matter what comes, you're going to get through it. Right? You'll come out on the other side uh, a certain way. But if you can't do that, then thank God for the medical doctors and people out there that treat you. You got that? Because where we have a lack of faith, God has inserted uh, systems and people to take care of those areas that we have a lack of faith in. And it's not going to be a hindrance to you. Don't worry about that. What I'm telling you is that intermittent fasting, when you stop ingesting what's on the shelves, when you stop ingesting all this stuff, and you, you do that with intermittent fasting, your body has a chance to actually start to repair itself. And believe it or not, the process begins when you get hungry. Most people get hungry, they instantly feed themselves. Remember when I told you guys I never do that? I never act on my hunger, not ever, and I never will.
Because if you give the body what it wants in any area, it will ask and beg in another area, and it will continue to do this. Because in your body is a desire, a lustful desire, that cannot be fulfilled. It's a simple signal. The problem is, we can act on those signals and then mess ourselves up. Your body is going to be hungry. But do you know what happens when you stay hungry for about four or five hours? A secondary system kicks into the body. Your hormonal levels begin to change. Things level out. The body stops storing all this uh, toxic stuff and it begins to flush it out. It begins to recreate itself back to the way it was. That's what your DNA is for. It will reconstruct itself in a proper way. And then your whole life changes. Why? Because your health has become better. That's why. And it works just like that. Intermittent fasting has healed a lot of people on this earth. I will tell you one thing that's good about the days we live in. People are becoming educated in certain uh, aspects of life as far as what doctors are actually doing. What's so funny is look at Hollywood. They're totally broken down. They don't know what to do. Do you not know that you have people who were millionaires a year ago? They're trying to get a job today, and they can't do it because they're famous. You have other folks who are famous and had a lot of money, but they have no income because Hollywood is essentially stalled. So these uh, representatives of the, of the earth, you know, the people that folks look up to, the people that they grew up with, those people that influence your life the most, well, they're hurting in the pockets right now because of Hollywood, because of entertainment. And it, it, it does expose something. It really does. The USA, one of the major things we produce is entertainment and weapons. We do that. You know we do that. Oh, my. We shouldn't do that, but that's what we do. I would love for America to actually be critical for the world, to stand in the gap for the world. But they won't do it. We had an opportunity, but we blew it. We did. We blew it. We did it through strong, insatiable desires that we have to have more power. People that we select based upon these gut feelings and intuitions, and they have gone all the way wrong, trusting in people too much and not our father. We did that. Our mistake won't happen again in the permanent kingdom. But I want you guys to know that about your health, because there's no, there really is no sense in most of you being broken the way you are. And take age out of the equation. Never look in a mirror and say, well, you know, I'm old. That's why this is happening. Are you kidding? you got to be kidding with that, right? Don't, don't do that because age has nothing to do with it. Your body knows exactly what to do. The problem is it, it, when you take all, this, all these medications, people are having these sugar-free diets and this, that, and the other. Do you know what you're doing? You're putting unknown chemicals into your body. Your body becomes like a beaker in a lab experiment, and you don't know what ingredients you're actually giving your body. Some of the nefarious tests that took place on the populace happened just like that. One grocery store would carry a product, and an element would be in that product. Well, then people would go somewhere else and get another product. You combine those two together, and you have something comparable to a vaccine that people ingested every single day. You guys remember I told you about COVID-19, right? The ingredients for COVID-19... In that vaccine, people were ingesting for years and never said anything. That's why I said it was too late. But you have people who learn about a vaccine say, don't take the vaccine. The problem was they were buying the raw ingredients from the grocery store for about five, six, seven, eight, nine years. And they had ingested that already. It's too late. I'm telling you right now, it's too late. So anything they were hoping to do with you has already been done. It's already been incubated, right? It's already done. But with Christ, he's the one, he's the one that negates any of these nefarious plans that would, that would uh, dare activate your life. You don't have to worry about the same thing other folks have to worry about. So if they wake up one morning with squirrel tails for eyebrows, right? You don't have to worry about that because of Christ. Remember that because of Christ. Christ works. He does not work on a lust basis. That's not how he works. He works on a need basis. And what that means is if you are in a position where you actually need something, you're going to have exactly what you need. He never told you that you would get everything you want. He never told you that. And all too often, people have no idea what they need. They only know what they want. God has not failed. He will not fail. He won't. We just have to make sure that we are sober enough to receive of the Lord in truth, not walk around with a frown on our faces because somehow we think we're missing what we were supposed to be supplied. It's time to come clean with that because we cast our own selves down as far as 
power is concerned, authority is concerned, things are readily available. They are. They really are. We just have to make sure that we're sober-minded, not hating everybody to your left and to your right. Can't do that. How many times does the Lord have to show us these, these life lessons? Every time humanity wants a, a man or a woman to lead them, do you not know that man or that woman suffers? Do you guys know that? I'm not talking about the Internet uh, uh, hype. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about reality. Reality is far different than what most people know. But here's a good rule. If you don't know a person personally, and all you know is what you have seen them do and what you have heard them do, but you don't know who they are, keep that person out of your mouth. It's very simple. Because if you continue to critique someone, you don't know what their background is. God made you a promise. He made you a promise to qualify your speech because we cannot be hypocrites. A hypocrite's not going to enter into the kingdom of God. A hypocrite is a person that speaks one way but does something different. He doesn't want us to be hypocrites. So here's how he promised he would help us. When you focus yourself upon somebody else and you have nothing but critiques, the Lord promised to put you in their shoes. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in the shoes of any of these folks that people are criticizing because most of what you see is scripted the first one can i tell you guys a little inside mystery all people who are over a certain amount of income they're all in the same club they're all in the same family i want you guys to know that you're not going to have a certain amount of money and be on the outside that's not going to happen that is uh the adversary's money that's just money that is they live one way but their propaganda enforces a way of or a standard of life upon everybody else who has no choice but to follow the rules they set. God did not set the rules of these kingdoms. Humans did that. Remember that. Never mistake what they're doing for something holy because it's not holy. Listen, anybody who's been in the field, who's been in combat, by mistake sometimes, they'll go three days with no water. You don't just fall over and die. If you're out of shape, if you've never gone to the field, you're not going to be able to go without water for a while. You're going to be dehydrated. But there have been times people have gone without water for 10, 15, 20 days, 30 days, 45 days. They still survive. It depends on what the condition of your body is. That's what it depends on. That's called propaganda, by the way, when they constantly... Now, I'm going to show you something that's witchcraft. Are you guys open for this? Now, I'm going to show you witchcraft because you've got to be careful what you believe. You, you've got to be real careful. You, you know in the Bible when it says, whose report are you going to believe? You've got to be careful in what you believe. Here's why. There are people in this world. They're all over the place. They are constantly speaking a spell over you. And when you go believing it, you just confirmed that spell, which means that spell is active in your life. And you will live your life under the conditions that you have just accepted. And even if you don't believe that there are spells, think about your faith. In the Bible it says, as a man thinketh, so is he. That's what the Bible says. As a man thinketh, so is he. So if you believe the words, these, these words of limitation that the world has, right? If you actually believe them. That's going to become a standard in your life, and you will indeed have the penalty of your own belief system. I hope you know that. You will. When you align your faith with the fathers, there are no limitations. There is no anything anybody could speak that would take away from your life. God made that clear. He made that clear. So if somebody says, people told me when I first started CRT that I, you know, I'm going to waste six months of the rest of my life because that's all I had left. Wrong. I'm still here. That was a long time. But then they did that stuff again. Then they did that stuff again. But see, I don't believe what doctors tell me. I believe what the Lord gives me. He's never lied to me. I've lied to myself. We lie, but God never lies. And when he communicates to you that you're going to be around to do something, you better believe that you're going to be around to do it. Some of you right now, you know that you're going to be around to do specific things in this world. So it doesn't matter who says you're going to pass away in four months, three hours, whatever the case is. Don't worry about that. Keep what the Lord told you at the top of your list. It will never fail. It's not going to fail. And how do you know it's the Lord? Because normally the Lord will give you something you would never think of. The Lord will give you something nobody else will ever think of. 
And, and when you voice that thing, all of a sudden, everybody will begin to fight it. If God gives you an assignment, do you not know that people will come alongside you and fight that assignment? They don't believe in what you're doing. They're going to become instant experts on why you shouldn't do it. That's how you know it's from the Lord, because the world does not like it. If the world likes it, how can it be from the Most High? When Jesus said that the world hated him and sought to kill him. So we know if the world likes it, it's not from the Most High. But when they don't like it, when people of the world that you didn't tell about whatever the Lord gave you, when they come to you and encourage you not to do something, and it has to be that very thing God gave to you, you're just looking at it, then you better believe it's from the Most High. Somebody said, even your own wife? Well, if it, listen to me closely, folks. Why would Satan work through a stranger? Why would he do that? Satan is not going to work through a stranger to get to you. He will discourage you through the closest, closest vessels to you, that's your kids and your spouse. You just, as men, listen, as men, you have to stand up and assume all responsibility, not some, all responsibility. If Satan is in your house, then boot him out. Check your activities and make sure that you, you are conformed to the word of God. If you lock the gates, nobody can open those gates. All too often, men leave the gates open. Why? Because men want to go and, you know, kind of let their hair down, I guess you could say. But no, don't ever let your hair down. God made you to work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. God made you to stand on your feet forever, so long as you're alive. God made you robust for a reason. You're a guardian of those people in your family. So be that guardian of those people in your family. Assume all responsibility. Never point a finger and start providing solutions for your family, spiritual solutions. And never let anybody in your family talk you into not spending time with the Lord, not praying, because they'll do it. They won't even know it. They will discourage you in ways that don't take language. You have to be smart enough to love them and to keep your father first. But God made you to do it or you, would, you wouldn't be a male. Now, ladies, that's exactly what men are made to do. Whether they want to do that or not, well, that's a different story. Because in the world, they have weakened a lot of males by reassigning roles. Confusion. But if you're a godly human being and you're a male, understand what God made you to be. He didn't make a mistake putting you in that male body. He knows exactly what he's doing. God's power is real. Everything about our Father is real. Here's the big issue. You can see God by faith. It's important it remain that way for the time being, so that what you do based in faith is a true deed. If everybody could see God right now, not one soul would ever sin again. Do you guys know that? Nobody would sin. But listen, they wouldn't sin because of what they were holding. If they could see God, they would be so frightened to sin. They'd be so scared because they would know he's the source of all light. And to be cast away from him would be worse than death. And they wouldn't want that. Or to behold his glory and fear the penalty. If we could see him like that, if we could see the Father, nobody would see him. But that's not what he's doing, is it? You can't see him. So you have that choice. You're not being intimidated to follow him or intimidated not to follow him. You're not. It's a simple choice. So based in that truth of us, we are reacting based in that truth. Do you see that? Because we're free. We're doing what we want to do. So then your true nature is being brought out every single day in this world. Your true nature. And by way of that truth, people will spend an eternity with the living God or an eternity separated from the living God. Because we are living and we're answering questions and everything by way of truth every single day of our lives. Because no one is forcing us. No one is forcing us. To repent no one is forcing us to follow this thing or that thing we're doing exactly what we want to do and circumstances you know what they do they make us choose in times that we ordinarily would not have to choose so every single circumstance or situation in your life is a brand new set of variables and when you go through those situations and circumstances you start weighing your own scales right that's what you do and so you're tested level by level to see if you're still going to choose the righteous way, even in terrible times with no benefit. For those who are choosing the righteous way, even when there is no benefit, God can trust you. Do you know that? For a person who needs benefit to choose God, God cannot trust that person. That's exactly what he did to Abraham. And after Abraham put his son on that altar and God said, no, don't do it. God said, now I can trust you. 
because God didn't do what? He didn't program us to obey him. He never did that. He made us with free will. One of the greatest powers you have is free will. That's the greatest power you have. The greatest power you have is free will. That ability to make your own choices. And we're choosing every single day based off the truth of us. Your choices are based off the truth of you. If you grow spiritually, your choices are going to change. If you decline spiritually, your choices are going to change. Either way, your choices, what you have chosen, is the truth of you level by level. And nobody can slick that system. No one can cheat that system. Not one soul can do that. Makes you reevaluate your life, huh? Because most people don't think their life is, is actually what it is. You got people talking about we're in a matrix. About all these other different topics that people are talking about. Some people just don't get it. They are forgetting that the fallen angels are masters at illusion. They're forgetting about that. Sound like that tornado that went through. Uh, there were four people. A tornado went right through their houses. The tornado did not touch a thing. It went right through their homes. And it didn't touch anything. How is that possible? The trees were damaged. All around the homes, you could see the foliage was moved and shifted. But nothing happened to their homes or their vehicles. How is that possible? How is it possible that a tornado can skip three or four houses and go right for the one? And it come to find out that one house it got to, that person either needed a severe life change or they were in over their head, right, in quite a few issues. And the tornado freed them from a life of bondage. You know, sometimes your issue that is very destructive is actually your blessing. Ask some of Angela's uh, individuals she talks to who are locked up in prison. And they will tell you right now that if they didn't go to prison, they would have corrupted the remaining portions of their life. There are so many people right now in prison that are free, freer than many of you. Why? Because they can let down their burdens. They no longer have to act. They are who they are and people know who they are. So they can start from a truthful platform and get their lives together. They feel so free and victorious, still locked up in prison, but they have more freedom than you. These people actually have the victory and it can only be obtained. That victory for them could only be obtained because they lost everything. When you lose everything and when everybody finds out that you're not the successful person that you were perpetrating to be, that person, whoever that person is, is free of all burdens. It is a burden to be some of these people you see on television. It is a burden to be them and they maintain that burden and that burden eventually will get to them. But if God intervenes, he'll have that same individual who was well known by everybody. You'll have them come clean in every area of their lives, instantly being free of all burdens. They let things fall where they might, and then that person gets up from the ground, you know, a thousand times stronger than what they were the first time. But this time, they can do it in truth. They need not build up anything based on a facade. My entire military career was based on a facade, because I was being someone they expected me to be. That wasn't who I was. I was no. I was not Rambo. I even looked the part too. That made it worse. I was a standard, one of those uh, uh, standard guys. Look at him. He looks like a soldier, right? It was a facade. It wasn't in my heart. That stuff was not in my heart. It wasn't there. That was a big lie, a big facade. It was. It was. And I'll never have that type of weight on me again. That's why I don't comp in, in doing this stuff online. You guys don't see me competing with anybody. I'm not getting into that game. No. Let those people be great. I just want to be effective in people's lives. I don't want to be great. I want to be effective. It's a difference. We'll read this small portion to you here. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste. Turneth it upside down and scattereth it the, the abroad, the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with the master. It's with the maid, it's with the mistress, it's with the buyer, it's with the seller, it's with the lender, it's with the borrower, it's with the taker of usury, it's with the giver of usury. For the land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. For the Lord hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. Languish or fade, fade away is you're going to begin to become very thin, die out, uh, not be of any use, of any use whatsoever. 
Kind of like some of these actors and actresses trying to find jobs. They don't qualify for anything. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. Keynote, they changed the ordinances. They changed what God initially set up. It's all been altered. It has been. Therefore have the curse devour the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Not good. I think part of this will be that meteor storm that's headed directly to us. The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, and all merry-hearted do sigh. All merry-hearted, all the happy people are not happy. They're not happy. The vine is thin. The new wine mourneth. Why would the new, new wine mourn in the vine language? Why? Well, the new wine, let's just say that the new wine is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it mourns. Notice it doesn't go anywhere. It mourns. Why won't it go anywhere? Because the new wine is carried by way of the vine to various regions. Correct? The vine, as Jesus described, we could say that's him. The father prunes all that stuff, right? We're grafted into the branch, right? But that vine carries everything to all the branches. The gospel or the new wine is still there, but it mourneth. And the merry hearted are now depressed. The mirth of Tibrax ceaseth. The noise of them that rejoice endeth. The joy of the harp ceaseth. No music, no celebrations, no anything. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man can come in. Every house is shut up. This is eerie to me. Because it's almost, I, I, I can almost guarantee that some of you have seen this too. There is crying for wine in the streets. Now, crying for wine, what is that? If you've ever been depressed, and if you are a Christian, you have been depressed. When you have, it feels like there's no life in you, there's no point to go on. Can you imagine everybody left here on this earth feeling that way? Now, the new wine is still present, but it mourneth. The vine languisheth. It's still here, but it's, it's very few. Imagine that. Here's what I believe. I believe there are some people appointed to go all the way through. I do. I believe some people are appointed to go all the way through. I believe that some people are not appointed to go all the way through. I believe that some of you, right? I know a lot of people talk about they're going to be taken away when Jesus returns. Probably many of you, you may be gone before that ever happens. You may be not, but you may be gone. You may be. It would be a merciful act if something were to happen and you were simply gone. Because your passing away from this place is not like a person of the world. You don't die. You don't pass the same way. Christians transition. People in the world, they die. They die. You don't die. Right? You do not die. You don't multiply, but you don't die. You don't die. You transition. They actually die. What awaits them? It's just like some of these people who tried to escape early and they end it all. They find out that they should have stayed here. There is no escape from the iniquitous doings of one's life. There is no escape. Death is not an escape. Death is a doorway into a final place. That's what death is. What people call death is exactly what it is. You transition either way. There is no death for you. You transition. So don't think it's the same for everybody because it's not. The city of confusion also is broken down. They're crying in the streets. All joy is darkened. There's no happiness. Do you guys want to be in a world like that? All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation. And the gate is smitten with destruction. When thus it shall be in the midst of the land among the people, there shall be a shaking of an olive tree. And as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done, they shall lift up their voice. They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. You see, they're in the earth. They're still here in the earth. There's something else we have to go over in Daniel, but not tonight. But I want you to take note, they're still in the earth in these conditions. Don't scare yourself and say, well, I don't want to be here in those conditions. I wouldn't be able to take it. Fact number one, you don't know what you can take, but your Father in heaven does. And he'll never place upon you beyond that which you can bear. He's not going to overwhelm you in something that you'll be overwhelmed with. He's not going to do that. Everything you've gone through and everything you're going to go through, you're able to handle. You are, or else you will not go through it. If a time were to ever come, 
that superseded what you're able to handle, you can you can rest assured you're not going to be here because he'll never place anything upon you beyond that which you can bear. But again, take note of this. You don't know how much you can bear until you start to bear it. And if it happens to you, guess what? You're able to bear it or it would not happen to you. God knows exactly what he's doing. All right, keep that in mind. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of God of Israel in the isles of the sea. Did you hear that? Glorify him in the fires. What fires? Part of that meteor storm. Part of the cycle that's about to hit this earth. All of what you see right now are indications of something massive building within the earth. Something no one wants you to pay attention to. The real danger of everything is building. They're trying to do everything they can to get you to look in every single direction but the right direction. They don't want you to have a sense of the timing because they can't do anything about their destination. So they're trying to stay alive as long as they can. Please don't follow their lead. If your life is in the hands of the Messiah, then stop thinking about your own life. Be about your father's business. You need not think about your own life. You're in good hands. You're bought with a price. So you're not going to be, um, you know, just left to the wind. That's not going to happen. And that's despite what you've done in your life. You believe in Christ, and that means everything. That means you will not stay the same. That's what it means. No matter how bad you've been, no matter how, how much of a scandalous individual any of you ever were, that doesn't matter. It matters that you know Christ and that you're pursuing Christ. Those of you who have had the more scandalous lifestyle, you are indeed warriors. You're needed on the front lines. There are people in the body of Christ. They don't know what you know. They don't have the experience with darkness that you have. And they cannot stand in strong conditions. But you can. So if you've been a hell raiser before you were saved, that makes you a frontline soldier indeed that makes you critical and valuable for what's coming so don't shy out now realize who god made you to be the city is gone that's sad the people are desolate it says wherefore glorify ye the lord in the fires even the name of the lord of israel in the isles of the sea for the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs even glory to the righteous but i said my leanness my leanness woe unto me the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. This means the way of the sinner was practiced on the earth and left a deep gouge. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon them. O inhabitant of the earth, notice it says, O inhabitant of the earth. This is in line with Revelation and the book of Daniel. When the vials of wrath are poured out on the earth, what men at that time have to endure. This is after the kingdom of the beast is thrust into darkness. When the vials pour out, it's going to be poured out. One is over the kingdom of the beast. So if you're part of that kingdom, you're doomed. You're going to be doomed. It says, and it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in a snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. Did you hear it? It's clean dissolved. Ruin all over the surface of the earth. Much like we see when we start digging in the dirt. Archaeology. What do you see? Ruins. That's what you see. What, what, how did those ruins come to be? By some massive fire all throughout the earth. Do you know that? Most people, when they dig into the ground, they go right to dinosaurs. No, 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 no. Listen. Civilizations that have been upon the earth, including the Mayan civilization and all these other civilizations, were taken out. All of them have fire damage. And what you see left over are footers or the, the, the rock structure underneath the actual structures, which many of them were metal, by the way. But metal Guess what happens to metal in the presence of heat? It's broken down to its most basic components. The only thing that stays is what? Brick, rock, things like that. And indeed, that's exactly what these people dig through. So they're witnessing something that happened on the earth before. It's about to happen again. And these fires are all consuming. Just like this meteor storm, there is no dodging this meteor storm. And it's very close now. There's no dodging it. It will consume everything in its path. The sun is going to be a direct mechanism of reaction. 
towards secondary forces that will come very close in proximity to our uh, sun, it, it's going to start to react as it's doing now. Here we are. And we continue. The earth shall reel to and fro like a trumpet, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. Looking through ancient documents of ancient civilizations, they were so destroyed by something that they carved out entire temples dedicated to a map. What do you think you see star constellations in just about every single uh, uh, type of ruins on the earth? A very inquisitive and smart gentleman told me one time when I was younger, he said, most people look at these things and they think that these people were worshipping stars. He said that happened in the histories before histories. What these people were doing was giving us a map. They dug up the all the little you know etchings that went with it, and, and they translated that stuff. And it essentially goes like this: something happened so bad on the face of the earth that people dedicated their whole lifetimes to etching something permanent that their children's children children would see it in hopes that they would turn to God before it's too late. Because every single life, you, you may not know this, they don't tell you this on television. These civilizations had this warning, forsake everything and turn to the true God before these things happen. They wanted to warn everybody who would be around the next time it hit. And you know what people are doing today? They're sitting there making money off these fines, and they're not telling people the truth. They're making up these fanciful stories. They're not telling people the truth. These people were desperate. That's why you see such similar etchings all throughout the world of the exact same thing. But they have taken that stuff. All they did was make money off of it. That's all they did. They turned it into entertainment. These folks were desperate, and they cared about their children's children. Children. They did. They cared about them. And so they built entire, in, in, in two cases I know of, they built entire cities devoted to a map so that people would find the information and they would know the indications of when it would come around again. Do you not know that one of the indications in all civilizations is that there will be a change in humanity? It's in our Bibles too, but they said men will become like women and women will become like men. Do you know that? It also says that one man on one side of the earth would speak to another man on the other side of the earth through a speaking stone. It also said that men would swim as fish in the oceans in, in big iron fish submarine. And they would fly in the air in these iron birds aircraft. So what described what's happening today and, and the conditions that we see today, this, this global warming thing is one of the big indicators that this secondary system is inbound. You cannot see it until it starts burning everything up. It will burn everything up. And the conditions will not leave. They said that the air was so hot, the lungs of people burned up while they were trying to breathe. Nobody could live by the waters. No one, because they could not breathe by the waters. This is in every... How can every civilization have the same story? You know what scientists do today? They ignore all of that and they go right down to the lowest levels and say a meteor hit and killed the dinosaurs. No one cares. They won't tell anybody about the conditions. This, this, these degrading conditions have already been mapped out in every culture. Why in the world would Celtics say abandon all the false gods and turn to the one true God before it's too late? Why would the people here or in Mexico say the exact same thing? You know what they do? They jump to the Mayan story. The Mayans didn't make it. All these mystery civilizations that were wiped out were dodos because they were believing in false gods, Quetzalcoatl and things like that who promised them to rule and reign for a thousand years. They never ruled and reigned for a thousand years because the calamity took their gods. It took their gods. And when it happened, you know what they did say in the Mayan cities? That when it began to happen, Quetzalcoatl abandoned them. He up and left them. And water started pouring from the heavens. Water with fire mixed into it. And nobody could touch that water. That was acidic water. You know where that came from? On the opposite side of the world, they said that the earth spewed out its guts. And it sprayed into the atmosphere, causing it to rain fire for months. Months, not one month, months. That means 
it ejected so much material in the upper atmosphere, and contrary to popular science, it did not all fall down to the Earth immediately. Now, because it was so, listen, out there in the ionosphere, if a volcano blew, listen to me closely, if it blew and it reached that part of the ionosphere, you do realize you're talking about 5,000 degree temperatures, which means all that material is going to continuously burn in the upper atmospheres, turning everything red on the Earth. But it will also fall like rain, hail, fire mingled with blood. Starting to get the picture. They went through this, and it's about to happen again. And, and while people are so fascinated with these other topics, people aren't getting prepared because the number one preparation was to abandon earthly goods and save the soul. Why did they put that down in their little, you know, etchings? Why is no one talking about this? Well, well, certain people do talk about this on the Internet. But what I'm telling you is that, for the most part, if we fall for the, for the tricky concepts these witches and warlocks have in, in marketing, we're going to start taking these stories, turning them into entertainment, making money, sitting back in our lounge chairs, having everything we want, not being even close to prepare to mentally handle what's truly about to happen. And when it happens, all hope is abandoned. Nobody's way is going to work out. You know, these cultures said nobody's God's worked out except the one true God. Do you know that? Half these civilizations did not know to call Israel Israel. The Hebrews Hebrews. They didn't know that. But they kept talking about abandoning. They said during that time, the gods that they were serving were made false, feeble, weak. And they cried like men during that time. But there was one true God and his face swept across the skies. Do you know that? And everybody in their hearts had the same message. Now, you know, only God can do that. How can everybody in their hearts have the same message? Did anybody ever read to you what Pharaoh said? Anybody? Pharaoh. You know, the one that had uh, uh, Moses captive? That Pharaoh. Anybody ever tell you what, what he said? What they found of him? That he went out into some other lands? And he believed in the God of Moses? After all that was said and done, he knew the God of Moses was real. He knew that the gods in Egypt were false, that they were imposters, that they may have been a little higher than humanity, but they were nothing in the face of God's wrath. You know, he left that city and went out and lived a quiet life, serving God. Only God can do that. Did anybody tell you about the people that were part of the Mayan temples when that calamity happened, how they turned to the one true living God? Nobody told you that, did they? How they abandoned Quetzalcoatl and all those things that they were worshipping. And they turned to the living God. And somehow they knew about the gospel. How do you know about the gospel before the gospel comes around? They don't tell you about that, do they? What about the copy of the Ten Commandments that was found in Mexico? See how polluted things have become. How they have the internet such brilliant tools. And a bunch of garbage float across the internet. That does not... It does not edify your life in truth, not one bit. You may have a good living standard while you're in the flesh, but there are no spiritual standards of increase being shared over the Internet save that of the Christian populace. But if the Christian populace is not careful, they're going to be scared into believing the falsehoods again. They're going to adopt this new age junk that's not working for the people who wrote it. Maybe that's why the Lord said, go back to your first words. Consider the first thing. He sure did. Let me continue. Isaiah 24, 19, or 24, 20. The earth shall reel to and fro like a trumpet, and shall be removed like a comet. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall, and not rise again. The transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. That is the consequence of man's activities. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high. I thought they were cast to earth. I thought the, the, the fallen angels were cast to earth. They were. So what is he talking about? This is something else we're going to have to address. Something dealing with the luminaries. So that people won't speculate, but they can read exactly what they are. What every single star in the sky represents. God made this creation after his word. They're corrupt portions of this creation right now. They were not doing what they were supposed to do. So in the New Testament, you read... The powers of heaven are shaken. The powers of heaven. If, if you look in the Kano Greek thing, you understand. This is a reference to something very old. Let me, let me say one more thing, too. Astrology from the world is, is all messed up. I'll say it again. In some of these ancient carvings, you see symbolism like the fish and the bull and this, that, and the other. But see, there, there are 
primers, alignment markings that people just discard. You put all those alignment markers together, you get the story. You get a map of the constellations. You get the warning of the bull. Do you know that? The warning of the bull. The, the bull is a warning in that same map right before Aquarius. Another warning appears. One of the warnings comes directly here to Earth. It's in every single ancient civilization that went through this stuff. See, these guys saw the destroyer. And just in case you didn't know, the destroyer is under the power of the Almighty. Men have made up fairy tales in an attempt to describe something very real, causing nothing but confusion, which is why it's difficult to talk about those subjects. But the Bible should be sufficient. But people are hungry. They, they, they see this extra material, and they see a truth in some of it. They don't necessarily believe the interpretations of those giving the presentations. But they know a truth is in there. It's almost like somebody is trying to tell you something with some of these ancient things that you see. There is a story to be told. And these elitists that you guys talk about, they've already extracted the story. What do you think they built the underground bases? They, they knew from the Germans how long it would take to get an underground place ready. Right? People will start talking about these underground places. Truck drivers are going to start going with the, with the release of this UAP stuff. Truck drivers will come forward. They're going to tell you about the elevators that you park about 10 tractor trailers on. And they shut the door to that elevator. And you feel yourself going straight down, but you don't hear anything. It's like a vacuum seal. You don't hear anything. And how they pull out and they cannot see the top of the cavern they're in. They're going to tell you about that. How they see something that looks just like a futuristic New York City down in these places. They're going to tell you about that. And how they cannot step foot over a certain part. All they do is unload that tractor trailer. They, they, then they get another one and drive out. They're going to tell you about that. These people will start to come forward. You're going to know about their preparations. They're not going to care if you know or not. Because at this point, you can't do anything to stop it. People don't know the entry points. They don't know the exit points. There's no way you can get down there. Some of these places, you have to take a, a, a trip on some hyper transway down below the earth to get there in the first place. But they are there. And nobody unauthorized is going to get to these places. All the important people have been removed from the face of the earth, right in front of the faces of everybody. We had this conversation 15, 20 years ago, didn't we? That when you stopped seeing all the important people who really cared about this nation, but consequently the same people who cared about the nation also had a relationship with Christ. But they made a mistake. They sought to save their own lives. And so they said yes to some of these folks who went underground. Compromise. Just like the Bible says. Because they have them believing too that somehow man can be their saviors. It's the same sickness that we're going through. The same sickness. And now what do you see in power? People that you would never select yourselves. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you like, who you don't like. You couldn't tell me back in 2005 that some of the figures who are running for, for election would ever run for president. You cannot. You couldn't tell me that back then because I would say no way. There's a clear divide between people who are who represent government, who care about the world, who have the balance and, and all these things in their lives to be a president versus some of these people you see in the world who are entertainers. You can't take an entertainer and stick him in the White House. That would be a joke. What have we been living under all this time? CIA operatives. Nothing against the people. But look at the fruit of what's happening to the world. It's almost like every person who ever had a solution has been withdrawn. They're gone. The serious people. What are we left with? People who just do nothing but take up time. Let me tell you something. Because the, some of you have been leaders out there, right? The last thing a leader will ever do is point a finger. Do you guys know that? If a leader points a finger, that person is not a leader. A leader will assume all responsibility for everything. They will not point a finger. And I hate to say it, what you find in these days are people who only care about their own reputations, power, greed, hunger, and everything else. A leader does not do what these people do. A leader will never point. They're not going to point. You guys remember some of the older presidents, not the ones that got ejected, but some of the older presidents. They did not point fingers and say it's their fault. That's not what they did. They said, we have to rise above this threat. We have to rise above these circumstances. We have to do what we can do to make sure that America stands back on her feet. 
See, they were devoted for the cause, but all of a sudden everything changed and everybody starts saying, oh, it's their fault. They're the reason we're not making it. That is not a leader. That's a sickness that, that everybody seems to suffer from these days. Well, not everybody, but most people. That's a sickness, a product of the environment. Something has definitely changed. You're not in normal times. They're trying to prop up this earth like it's okay, like the heavens are okay, like nothing is happening. They can't hide global warming because everything is heating up in the entire solar system. So, of course, they're going to they're gonna cover that with this global warming nonsense. Do you guys know when this global warming stuff started? In 2004. Do you know what kicked off 2004? A magnetar blew. Do you know what happened? It swiped a part of our atmosphere and they had emergency meetings from that day to this very day. It wasn't about humans heating up anything. It was about these threats that are external, our solar system that were coming here. And the magnetars, well, they give a marker to how close we were to the trouble. That took everybody by surprise. Not one soul knew of that until after it took place. See, that's when we had all the ozone problems. Don't you guys remember? That's when the ozone problems came up. That's when they had the emergency Congress put together for this, you know, global warming stuff. That's when all the space agencies, um, they changed most of their personnel and directives concerning global warming. That's when they dreamed up Al Gore and gave him this narrative. He would run away with it, advertising for one thing. They knew the real problem. They knew they had to make preparations. And ever since that time, things have been massively degrading in the earth. Everything has been a distraction. And you're about to have another distraction. What are they distracting from? That something has happened in space, and they're trying to cover that up. Something is out there. We're not talking about UAPs. Things are different out in the heavens. And they're trying to make it seem like nothing is different in the heavens. Everything is digital now. You can't trust digital stuff. I mean, finish things. Isaiah 24, 21, it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the hosts of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. So the high ones that are on high are not the kings of the earth. Don't worry. We'll look into that. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days, they shall be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed. When the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. See, now he's going to rule before his ancients gloriously. Don't you understand what's happening? Spiritually, everything is coming here. Let me tell you what you're in the middle of. You might want to get all your garments ready because everybody's coming here to witness the birth of the children. I hope you know that. The punishment of the high ones. The high court is coming right here to this earth. Right here. It's not going somewhere else. It's not happening in Vega. It's not happening, you know, in Orion. It's happening right here on this earth. Right here. Everything is coming to see you and everybody else. Right here. The court proceedings are going to be held right here. The gathering and the birth of the children happening right here. The punishment of the fallen right here. Everything is happening right here. Can't you see what's happening? This is one big, huge event that's happening right here. Your father in heaven is showing up here. And he's coming back with a massive eviction notice. And a full restoration will take place. Nobody can jump to his side when he comes. The only way you can be family, true family, is to do it right now by faith. You cannot do it when you see it, because that would be false. If anybody saw the living God, his glory, and his power, everybody would jump to his side and say, I'll serve you forevermore. And they would probably do so out of fear, out of different reasons, because they see him, because they know they can't defeat him. But nobody can see him now. And the only way we can believe in him is by faith. Nobody can prove nor disprove him. And by faith we believe, by faith we read, by faith we follow, by faith we obey. And if we do that by faith, then we become family. That's our father's method is by faith. Because if he were to show up with everything that includes him, people would be scared to death to disobey. So he give us freedom and distance so that we could on our own, by the truth of who we are in our very souls, become family or not. And everything you do in your life is answering that question. Everything you do. See, that's why you can't, don't deceive yourselves and say, well, you know, this stuff is not going to happen. That's what the world says. You might want to be in tune with your spirit. Your spirit was troubled. You came to Christ. On occasion, you were told by way of the spirit, you don't have time to poop around. 
How many of you were going to start something brand new and then something else came over you and said, you don't have time? How many times did you, were you about to do something and, and, and a reminder came, you better do a genuine work. This is not the time for show. These are spiritual warnings. They're not going to just everybody. They're coming to all those who are willing to say yes to be family with the living God. Everything you're doing right now is for real, not for show. Your following Christ is for real. Don't make it for show. Make it intimate. Because when this takes place, this is final. There's no do-overs. You don't get another shot. You don't say, oops, I messed up. Let me go back and do it again. No. All your qualifications are right now. And the time or nothing has showed up yet. But let me remind you, things are starting to show up. And the more they show up, the less faith it's going to take to believe in certain aspects of the Father. Make your decision clearly and make it now. I'm not saying don't, don't, don't just say, I accept you, Lord. No, 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 no. You should be able to have someone look at your life. And that person should say, well, I've seen enough. That person believes in Christ. They are a Christian and they are obedient. That's what people should say about your life. Not because you're showing everybody this, because it's common to your life. The ways of righteousness should be common to us before he returns. we got to be very careful not to slip during these days. It is so easy to slip up and start doing something else. It is incredibly easy to get too relaxed or too caught up in anything. Don't let the agendas of this world sift you as wheat. You're going to soon see the truth of your little favorite leaders and they're going to make you regurgitate your own mouth because you're going to hear people speaking. I'm going to quote one of them, talking about some of the breakthroughs that you have. Like, and this is a man they're going to say, I can't wait until all the Christians are dying or dead and we won't have to deal with that opposition anymore. Your favorite people said that during a speech to the rest of your favorite people. They constantly continue to say these things. Don't fall for it. You know who you can trust? The Messiah. And you already know that. So then trust the Messiah. Compliment your fellow man. But place your trust, your dependency in the Messiah. Take it out of anybody you've got it in. You can compliment your fellow man. Love your fellow man freely. Forgive your fellow man. But have your trust in the Messiah. Have your confidence in the Word of God, in the Messiah. Start the reevaluation of everything and miss nothing when you do this evaluation. Look over everything. And unlike previous times when you said, well, I'll make that change next year. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't put it off because you may not have another chance. Do not put off the change for tomorrow. I can almost assure every single last one of you, time will be cut short for that. You will not have that time. You're not promised tomorrow. And now in your spirit, you know something is about to erupt in the earth. You don't know what. You don't know to what magnitude. But we just read something, which is a result. This is the result of what's happening in the earth. And it's coming faster and faster every day. In fact, it's developing. It's not coming anymore. It's already here. It's developing. But you better believe the entire consummation of all things is going to happen right here on this planet. It's not going to happen somewhere else. It's not going to be some classic thing like most people describe. Well, you know, God's going to sweep us into another dimension. Uh, yeah, okay. No, because you're going to witness everything. If you're in the spirit, you're still going to witness everything. The ancients are going to be here in view of what God will do to those who actually fell in the beginning. The end of times began with Christ. Jesus marked the end days. And now you're in the last minutes. You were the generation born with revelation in your spirits you were not the generation before you it was you you were you're the ones that are drawn to prophecy you're the ones that were you knew something was wrong with this standard giving of the word absent prophecy when everybody said things would get better you knew something was wrong with that message god put a truth in you that nobody can lie to you about because you had it before you ever read the word of god so recognize it and act on it. Recheck your garments. Understand who you are. Realize the timing. Take note of what the world will continually say until they are utterly destroyed. They will continually say, things have been happening like this since the beginning. They will say, where is the promise of us coming? That's when the trouble comes. You better expect that from them. But when they utter it, they're going to be fulfilling prophecy. 
I keep hearing people more and more. They've been saying it for the last 15 years, but people are saying uh, things are not coming to an end. Things have been happening like this for a long time. You remember when it came to the heat? In fact, not not just me, but other people talk about it too. I, I think maybe I was one of the early ones that initiated the, the storm issues and the fire issue. And what did people say? That's not true. The, the, the heat will never get that hot. The winds will never get that strong. The storms won't get that strong. Isn't that what they said? Because it was too early. Because they couldn't see it. Because they had no proof behind it. Let me tell you something. You can't have proof of prophecy. You either accept it or you do not. And the only way you can accept prophecy is to accept the source that gave the prophetic thing in the first place. So then, make sure you're hearing the Lord's prophecies. You're going to hear man's prophecies. But don't listen to me. Make sure you hear the Lord's prophecies. Make sure you know those. If I utter something and it turns out to be correct, if it's in truth or something of that nature, then the source of that truth is the Father. I wouldn't have it unless he gave, put it on my spirit, unless he showed it to me. I wouldn't have it. So again, make sure that you're looking towards the Almighty and his Son. Don't look towards the vessel that simply repeated the truth they heard from the Most High. In that essence, I'm a parakeet if I'm right. If I am right, I'm only right because I echoed the truth from the Most High. I'm not the source of any truth. Men can be a vessel of truth. They are not the source of truth. So don't worship the people. Don't worship the man. Stop looking to the man. Look towards the Creator. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.